Admiral Capital was born really out of the, the community things I was doing uh, as, a, as a spur. You know, we, I had a nice income. My wife and my, my, my family wanted to do something in San Antonio, so we started schools, private schools. Then we got involved. We, it, we transitioned to, to a charter school. Uh, and so now in the last five years, we've been building schools. We've built basically 20 new schools in San Antonio over the last five years. So it, that was my passion. And so to, in order to... Um, support that wonderful community passion. Uh, I wanted to extend my career in a different direction. So I went from basketball to business, uh, specifically the financial world. In Admiral Capital, we do um, real estate, value-add real estate. So we find basically broken assets and we try to uh, fix them up and, uh, and earn some money so that we can impact the communities where we invest. And David, how does the market day-to-day -day play into all of that when we look at a, a sell-off like we're seeing now? Yeah, no, we, we keep an eye on that, um, but, you know, the basic fundamentals are always there, and, we, you know, we're, we're out there always kind of finding, you know, where people are moving, what are the trends, you know, what are the what are income levels, and, and uh, where are people looking to, where's the transportation hubs, all the things that may have great factors for where people need to live, and then we find, find opportunity to create um, space for those people to find. So that doesn't change, and we'll continue to, to, to find the parts of the country, the areas where, where real estate is strong and is doing well and and will continue to work in those areas boy we have so many things we could talk with you about I, i'm curious you know a uh, uh, former fellow player uh charles smith played for the knicks years ago he has started a group that helps players transition from their playing days to the retirement years quote unquote retirement years to help them from, you know, we hear the horror stories of players who've lost all their money because they just don't know what to do with themselves after they've played. You probably have seen that a lot as well. What, how was the transition for you out of the, out of the league? I bet it wasn't nearly as bad, huh? Uh, well, <laughs> it's a tough transition. I mean, you go from being a, an NBA player, you're playing at the highest level of your profession. You're the expert, so to speak, and, and into a whole nother world. Here I am in the financial world, and I'm the the dumbest guy in the room every time we have a meeting. So a uh, lot of fun learning a new space, uh, finding the right people to partner with, and, uh, and, and just learning how to use my assets, my strengths, to bring value to every deal. All right, David, what would you do to bring value to the Knicks here? You know, I, I hear they might need someone else to kind of, you know, right the ship and, and fix, you know, figure things mm, out there. There's an opening in the Magic's corner. Magic's at the Lakers. There's an opening in the corner yeah, office. I'm wondering, can I, can I get one of those Phil Jackson deals? That would be great. I, I'll, I'll, yeah. I'll talk about it if, uh, if they offer me that. <laughs> you know, Bill Russell said last week before the NBA Awards that the, the way the game has changed is it's more one-on-one. -on -one. It's not team ball anymore. Do you agree with that? He doesn't like that. What do you think? Well, you know, it is, it's changing a little bit, and I think it's, it's um, also kind of spurred on by the way we're calling the games as well. You know, we can't be as physical. We can't touch guys. So it, it is lending itself to individuals making a lot of plays. Um, but, you know, you see the Spurs and you see teams like the Warriors who are still moving the ball very, very well, and they're utilizing good balance. I mean, the two teams with the best record in the league were two teams that shared the ball, had very unselfish teams. So I still exactly. think that works. Um, and, and teams need to pay attention to what's been successful. Uh, but the challenge is building, how do I build my squad to compete with, the, you know, either the Spurs or the Warriors? And, and that's, that's where these young teams, you see teams like uh, Minnesota or, you know, some of these young teams like Philadelphia are trying to figure it out and get there. Right. David, I just wanted, we were recently reading about the 92 Dream Team, and as successful as you've been, I think it's important to remind people that, you know, you had a character that stood up to a lot of the shenanigans and whatever that your teammates were doing at the time. And, you know, it was really impressive to go back and to read about it. And what is it that helps you kind of keep your head down and work hard when everyone around you seems to be, you know, goofing off? Yeah, no, that's a, that's a great question. You know, we, we had a little bit of dysfunction uh, on the team when I got there. And, I, you know, I think a lot of it, for me, it was my faith. You know, it just it kept me grounded and it gave me a mission really to, I looked at that locker room and said, how do I help guys? How do I put them in a position where they can be successful? Not just on the court, but in, in, off the court, right? Making good decisions as family, you know, being good husbands and fathers, and how do I be a good teammate to these guys? And so that's how we tried to build the culture in San Antonio. And I think now you look at it 25 years later, and it's a great locker room. It's a place where guys do root for one another. You feel like young men become men. I watched Kawhi Leonard now become this super stud 
uh, yeah. incredible young man. And, and I think it's because of that culture. Yeah. And I think it's clear that if you ever run a team, it's not going to be the, the Knicks. <laughs> the Spurs are still uh, number one in your heart. <laughs> David, David, a thrill to have you oh, with man. us today again. Thank you for joining us. Thanks for your time. Yeah. Thanks so much for having and, me today. You bet. NBA Hall of Famer David Robinson. Uh, My dad had his Edward poster Hall. in the, our little weight room, you know, the garage at home, growing only one. You know, it's incredible. Good. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.